guys, my name is Zach Siri and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create an analytics system using Ruby and Redis. So we're going to start out with something very basic. We're going to, we're going to connect to the Redis uh, you know, database, uh, the NoSQL database, and then we're going to you know, see how we can write stuff to it. And we're going to take a look at some of the basic data structure that comes with Redis, and then we're basically just going to learn how to use all of them and you know how to apply them to the system that we're trying to create which is analytics system what do i mean by analytic system so um so for example if you go to a youtube video you're going to see you know that they track the page views um you know or if you've used google analytics uh you know you've probably seen the unique visitors uh you know how do you track unique visitors how do you track page views and all that kind of stuff so we're going to start off with these two very basic analytics, uh, tracking the page view and the tracking the unique visitors. Um, you know, if you want to continue building this and track other, uh, uh, you know, stats, uh, you know, you're welcome to, to do that. Um, but we're going to start off very basic. You know, we're going to learn how first, how we're going to interface with Redis. And then after that, we're going to, you know, try and use the concepts that we've learned and apply it to, uh, you know, to building our analytics system. All right, so let's get started with Redis. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, go ahead and do a brew install Redis. If you don't have Homebrew, uh, why don't you have it? I don't know why you don't have it. Anyway, just install it and then go ahead and install Redis. Uh, I already have it, so it's going to tell me that I already have it. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is we need to start the Redis server. So go ahead and type Redis hyphen server. All right, so now I'm going to open another tab and what we're going to do here is a very simple basic IRB session where I'm going to go in and I'm going to start writing stuff to our Redis instance. All right, so I'm going to go into IRB and I'm going to require Redis here. Oh, by the way, if you haven't, uh, you're going to need to install the Redis gem. So to do a gem install Redis. Uh, I already have it, so I'm not going to do that again. Uh, so I'm going to do IRB and then I'm just going to do require Redis just like that. All right, so that worked. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a Redis instance equals Redis dot new. So what this does is it's going to create a Redis client in our Ruby console that connects to our Redis server. Uh, so let me show you what I mean. So well, here I'm already connected to to my Redis instance, and what I can do is I can just write stuff to it. So for example, let's do Redis uh, dot set hi hi there, just like that, right? So we have, uh, Redis is a key value store, so we have to specify the key uh, every time. Uh, like, every, for example, here I'm storing the word hi there in the store, in the, in the key hi, right? Actually, I just do hi like, like that, that's better. Okay, so I'm gonna set that, and what's gonna happen is it's gonna write to our Redis instance. So how do we see all that? Well, I have this tool called Redis Commander. Uh, so if you don't have it, you can go ahead and install it. It can be very handy. And once you have it installed, uh, it's and you start it up, it's going to listen on port 8081. So I'm going to go into my browser and I'm going to open up uh, uh, localhost 8081. And here it is. So I have a few things here that I've ever written to, but uh, this is what we wrote uh, to Redis. Hi and the value is there. So keys high value is there. So it's, it's basically that simple. I mean, you just tell Redis what you want to write to it and you write it to Redis. I mean, there's not much more to it than that. All right, so basically that's, you know, so far we've been just exploring like basic, writing basic strings, but Redis can do much more than that, right? Redis, can, you can write list. So it has like these data structures that you can use as sets, sorted sets, um, you know, list, and uh, if you look over here, it even has a hash. So we can use all these commands. Uh, so I highly recommend if you have never been to the Redis website, uh, the commands page is where I spend most of my time when I'm working with Redis. Um, you know, you can very easily go through the different, uh, you know, the different uh, different data types that Redis has, and uh, you know, just pick one of the commands and read through. The documentation is really, really good, uh, and then you know, you can learn a lot from this. So let's let's take a look at list, right? So a list is a lot like an array. So if you're familiar with Ruby, where we have an array, um, you know, like for example, fruits equals apples, 
oranges, bananas, right? So we have an array. So that's basically what a list is in uh, in, in in Redis. Uh, there's more to it than that, but you know, let's just keep things simple for now. But it, yeah, think of it as an array, right? So how do we write to a list? So very simple. Redis dot so list. Uh, let's look at the documentation here. Let's try the L push, right? We know in in Ruby we can use a push command to push stuff into the you know into the array. Um, so L push. So why is it L push? Well, let me first do it, uh, and then uh, I'll explain to you what it all means. So I'm going to push an apple into uh, into the the fruits uh, array or well, the list. I'm going to push another one. L push. Fruits, oranges, and redis. L push, fruits, and bananas. So, if I go to the Redis commander now, uh, I have a. I'm going to reload that a little bit. Okay, so we have this fruits list: bananas, oranges, and apples. So. We push Apple in there first, right? So what L push actually means is it's not so much uh, list push, it's more left push, right? So we're pushing an item from the left side. So imagine, if you will, that your list is a horizontal list like this. Uh, L push just means just add the item to the left side. So over here, like just put it inside the left side of the list. Uh, so if we have left push, then we have right push as well, right? So check this out, redis dot r push fruits, and let's push uh, strawberries in there. Right. So we can do r push, and if I go and do a reload, where do you think the strawberry will pop up if I once I refresh? So left push means we're pushing from the top of the list, right? So now, if you imagine for a second, our horizontal list is now vertical. Um, we're Left push means we're pushing from the top of the list. So our push would mean we're pushing from the bottom. So actually, our hypothesis should be that uh, we're going to see the strawberries at the bottom of the list, right? So go ahead and reload, and there it is. Look at that, right? So that's some very simple, basic Redis for you. Um, you can pretty much go and try any command in here. Uh, it's very straightforward. They have some great examples for you. Uh, if you click on the documentation, so for example, if I click on L push, I'm going to see it insert all specified values at the head of the list. So actually what it sees, it says here is we can actually push an array of stuff into it. So for example, redis.r push fruits. So here we have, let's say for example, another uh, durian. So if you don't know what durian is, go ahead and look it up. It's, it's crazy. Anyway. Uh, so we have mango steam. All right, so we're gonna push two items to the bottom of the list. Hit enter, and now we're gonna go back to Redis Commander. Reload. Click fruits, and there it is. Look at that durian and mango steam at the bottom of the list. Perfect. Okay, so that's pretty much all we're gonna. You know, I'm gonna show you how to. I showed you how to connect, how to install, connect, and, and all that. Do some basic pushes and uh, put some stuff into Redis. Most of the stuff I would recommend that you come over here and look through the command list. Uh, you know, look at the different data types. Uh, we're gonna be using sets uh, later on, uh, so if you want, you can take a look at that. And uh, you know, we're gonna continue now, and uh, we're gonna take a look at how we can apply all this stuff in the context of an analytic system. So in an analytic system, we're going to track how many page views our post has, right? So let's start. Let's start with that.